Hello and welcome to the second video about chapter 9. Chapter 9 Seals and Operations Planning. In the first video we crossed the, uh, the supply side of uh, managing your uh, sales and operations uh, planning. Uh, as mentioned, you can also uh, manage the demand side and in this video we're going to cross the demand side. Uh, we do this that based on the example of uh, red tomato tools. Um, red tomato tools, um, we use the following uh, uh, variables uh, based on material cost all the way to subcontracting and when we input this into the Excel file also used in uh, chapter 8 we come up with, an, uh, mix with the uh, profit, the revenue and the cost of um, uh, of that of that particular product over time. In this uh, case, over six uh, periods of time. All the input variables mentioned on the slide earlier can be found here, here, all the way to there. Um, uh, as you can see, the production in this uh, stage is stable, so we are uh, pursuing a level production strategy. The demand is written in uh, column uh, J and uh, comes from the, um, uh, from the forecast based in uh, chapter 7. The last uh, column is uh, the price. The price uh, is important because in this um, video we're going to see what would happen if you would uh, change uh, the price in uh, one period, in this case in, in a month, in a peak, um, in a, in, during peak time or during low season. As you can see the demand changes over time. In January the demand is 1500 pieces and in April the demand is 3800 pieces. So what would happen if you um, if you uh, come up with a price discount in January being low period and in April being high season. But in this case let's find out what, um, uh, what would happen if we do not change the price at all. Um, then the uh, profit over the whole planning horizon, in this case six months, is 217,725. What's important to calculate the average seasonal inventory. So you want to, um, you want to uh, uh, make sure that the inventory itself is not too big as inventory carries risks. How do you do that? You um, calculate the uh, inventory of um, period 0 all the way to period 6 and all the, uh, all the periods in between. And um, uh, based on, uh, on 6 periods you divide it by 6. And in this case the uh, average seasonal inventory is 800 and 95 pieces. The average flow time is the average inventory 895 divided by the average sales. The average sales can be um, uh, um, uh, can be deducted from the Excel file given earlier. And it is 2676. 895 divided by 2000 667 is 0 0.34 months. So in this case the uh, average uh, time a unit is, uh, is in stock is 0 0.34 months. 
and the average amount of uh, inventory carried is 895. So, um, uh, the timing of a, a promotion will uh, have impact on uh, demand. Uh, the cost of inventory as um, uh, demand will rise and fall. It will uh, cost the, uh, the cost of changing the level of capacity itself, so the level of capacity in your workforce and in your machine park. It will affect your product margins and increase uh, the demand from uh, market growth or um, uh, uh, getting more share into the, into the, 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 whole, uh, into the whole marketplace or forward buying. Um, uh, the case we're going to analyze now is when to uh, promote. Is it uh, more um, effective pro to promote in peak period or off-peak uh, period and analyze the impact of a promotion on demand in the resulting optimal aggregate plan? That's what we want to. Um, uh, that's what we want to analyze now. So, if we do a promotion in January, um, our forecast for January is changed. Our forecast for January is changed to, in this case, three thousand, and the price itself went down from forty to thirty-nine. In this case. The, pro the profit over the whole planning horizon is 221,000. As you see, it has a lower uh, seasonal inventory, can be calculated as mentioned earlier on the slides, uh, a somewhat lower total cost compared to, um, to having all 40, and a higher total profit compared to all 40. So in this case, uh, promotion in an off-peak period is um, profitable over um, not promoting in off-peak uh, off uh, uh, period. If we do the same in April, now the demand has risen in April from uh, 3,800 to 5,000, and we did that through um, giving a price discount of one dollar. So the price went from uh, 40 to 39. What happens is that the total planning, the total profit over the planning horizon, went down. It went to 2011. It carries a higher in seasonal inventory and a slightly smaller profit. So, uh, given a an, um, an, uh, price uh, reduction, price promotion in high season, in this case, was not profitable for the whole supply chain, as this is the profit over the whole supply chain. Um, in this case, uh, the discount leads to a larger increase in consumption. So, um, we uh, uh, redid our, um, our forecasting again and we increased the, uh, the demand, the forecasted demand, in January. In this case, it went to 4,440. What happened is that the profit um, increased from 221,000 to 242,000. So a higher total profit than the base case itself. The base case is the case in which we all have 40s. If we would do the same in April, 
so we uh, through the um, uh, price discount we further increase the demand in this case the demand is 8480 now what would happen if um, what would happen to the profit the profit went all the way to 247,000. So it's even higher as uh, promoting in off period, uh, off peak uh, period. So in this case, it's better to uh, promote in peak period as compared to uh, a low period. But it carries much higher level of seasonal inventory uses more stockouts and stop subcontracting, the revenues increase and, as uh, told earlier, the total profits increase. Uh, uses more stockouts and st subcontracting is, uh, is a management decision. Do you want uh, stockouts and if you allow for stockouts, how many stockouts do you allow for? Please refer to the service level you have um, uh, you have come up with your um, uh, with your customers and subcontracting. Do you want subcontractors to be involved in your production process? Do you want them to complete your final product or not? Uh, for example, based on patterns and. Um, uh, and those variables, based on those variables, you can take the management decision not to go for subcontracting. So, um, this all comes up with an uh, with an all graph, uh, with an all uh, table. I'm sorry. In uh, in this table, we have um, uh, uh, we have put in several scenarios, two, four, six, eight different scenarios of what to do. Please refer to the book if you want more information about all these eight scenarios. Um, based on uh, based on those uh, scenarios, you can conclude the impact on the promotion of timing. It's based on high forward buying, the ability to steal market share, the ability to increase the overall market itself, high product margin, low product margin, high manufacturing holding cost, high cost of changing capacity, high retailer holding cost and high promotion elasticity of customer. And as you uh, and as you can see, when you are in uh, one of those factors, for example, you're selling a product with a high profit margin, it's better to uh, promote in peak periods. If you are in a low margin, um, uh, if you are in the low margin business it favors low demand periods. If, um, if the um, retailer holding costs are very high, this decreases the forward buying by the reseller itself, by the retailer itself. Um, these are very important factors and based on, on these factors, you can come up with a sales and operations planning um, based on your particular uh, factor in your business. So please select the factor in your business and uh, based upon that create the impact on timing of production, of promotion and or forward buy. In the next uh, video we will conclude this um, this chapter about uh, promotion and we come up with a summary of our learning objectives.